It's nine o'clock and as promised, Clay Scott from Circle of Dust. How you doing, man? In the studio. It's almost like live after death, really. That's why we're clapping, because it's almost like you're back from the grave. Um, you got a new album out called Disengage. Correct. Just talk to me about it. Say what you got to say. Uh, Plug the hell out of your album. I'm not really sure where to start with it. Um, where did it come from? Where did it come from? Yes. What, what, well, what stemmed this release? Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know how I could answer that without giving a bit of history. Um, the last Circle of Dust record was put out on a label called REX. They were based out of Nashville without getting... Uh, too intimate and boring with all the details. There were legal battles that ensued uh, at the end of 95 that lasted for a year and a half that kind of tied me up. Creatively, I couldn't sign to another label. I couldn't release another record on REX. They had no distribution. Um, so basically, um, that was when I had decided to technically put an end to Circle of Dust and pursue other things. And um, I had had material that I had started writing for a new record and obviously couldn't release. So um, Disengage actually was born from some of that material as well as um, some other material that I had sitting around from some other projects I, ha I had started and never finished, um, and some brand new stuff. How does it feel after you sit there and you, you say, you know, it's, it's been, some of the material has been laying around, stuff like that. how does it feel when you put it all together? Did, did it make sense when you put it together? Did, did I visited it first when you, when you were putting this material together? I think it was uh, more like I looked at what I had and tried to figure out how to make sense of it. I went back to the tracks that I had written a few years before and revamped them, remixed them, uh, obviously re-recorded parts and things like that, and um, I really felt when the finished product was done that it was cohesive. Okay, so we slipped out of Refactor with just about no explanation. <laughs> mm, I, I'm not really sure what I can even say about it. Really? It's like that far distant? It, it is, I love that song. It's um. I, I think uh, if I were to redo it now, it'd probably be a little e even more different than it is now. But um. Really. Uh. Yeah. Well, actually, that that was written two completely different parts. The the beginning verses that are a little quicker than everything else was written. Uh. That was probably written. I don't even know. I don't know how to gauge it. Probably two years, two and a half years ago. And then the chorus part, which is where the tempo changes or slows down, um, was written after that. I was in a different mindset musically. That's usually when the best stuff happens because I, I'll be influenced by something, come back to a piece that I started a month or two later with a totally different idea and try to combine it into the same song. And you end up with something that, uh, you know, either totally works or it totally doesn't. See, folks, yeah. that's a real musician at work right there. Not totally. You want to talk? This guy plays like everything. That's awesome. Okay, you want to? Could you list Not for us? Not everything. Could you list for us what you do play? What I do play? Yes, what, what you have the ability to. I'm not sure if I can really play anything. Really? No, I'm just kidding. Well, I've seen you play guitar, so I know no, you can at least do that. I'm kidding. And uh, you basically I, did this entire there, album all by yourself. So well, there, there's a phrase that comes to mind. It's um, it's um, <laughs> jack of all trades, but master of none. I think, that, I think that I think that applies here. I I really I look at what I do. Um, um, I use my instruments and whatever instrument that may be as a, a tool for the end result. I want I want to write a song, and um, if I hear a horn. In this song, I'm gonna go find a horn and I'll play around with it until it sounds like something I want it to. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna join the brass section and, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> be grooving along with these people because I probably can't do that. But as far as playing guitar is concerned, as far as drums, bass, what have you, you know, the keys, um, uh, programming, pretty much all self-taught, and it was for those reasons. Disengage, right, and refract the chasm. Right. Now, what made you decide to uh, go ballistic on the second half and remix and uh, redo a lot of stuff? Unfortunately, it was not my decision to put both of these separate entities on one CD. I was kind of forced into that situation. The, the Refractor Chasm half of the CD was supposed to be a CD single. Um, so um, I had done the artwork for it as well, as for a separate single as well as the remixes. And um, when came time to deliver, I was informed that they weren't going to do it at all. So I uh, <clears throat> had to work it out with them so that they would at least put the tracks, the music part of it, at the end of the full-length Disengage release. But I wanted to keep some some sort of separation there so people knew that these were meant to be different, two different releases. You know. Not only did you write the songs, play just about every instrument, and mix them all together, and y you produced the album as well, mm -hmm. you designed the artwork for the album. Yep, did that too. Jeez. <clears throat> See, I have this uh, problem, um, and this goes back to another, uh, another saying that I heard my whole life. It's, uh, you know, if you want something done right, you have yeah, to do it yourself. Do it yourself. And uh, that's basically what it came down to. I just had a lot of ideas, and uh, I don't really trust anybody else with them. So I just, uh, you know, I realized that my computer that I had been using for how many years was more capable of just, you know, it was more, more capable than just creating music. I mean, I could do so many other things and started messing around with images and visual art. 
and that's how I had gotten into that. And um, actually, it's very similar to creating music, so that's why it was kind of a natural progression.